It's currently three o'clock in the afternoon here in the Middle Kingdom, and we really gotta fucking talk about Black Myth right now. The number one game on Steam with a bullet as I am recording this. And before we get into the nitty gritty, I have to run down some of these numbers. I almost made a video a night or two ago where I was gonna do a little odds making and kind of predict it what the metrics are gonna look like for this game. I didn't end up putting it up because I got lazy, but uh, if I did, it would have been pretty embarrassing because my uh, predictions were way, way low. I really underestimated this thing. So let me just run through the numbers on this game as they stand right now. This is bound to change. The game's only been out for about six hours. But this is where it stands right now. The current player count is above 1.4 million. 1.4 million player count, which means, as I said, as I'm recording this, it is the number one game on Steam. It has temporarily dethroned Counter-Strike. Now, I want to give you a frame of reference for 1.4 million concurrent players. So I'm going to compare that figure to a few prestige titles, recent big deal games that everyone in the gaming press like to talk about, all right? Baldur's Gate 3, top player count of all time, 875,000. Elden Ring, topped out about 950,000. Cyberpunk 2077, topped out a little bit over a million, a million and 50,000. Not even close, not even close. But I wanna go a step further Let's look at the top player counts for the biggest games on the platform because 1.4 million concurrent players means Black Myth just beat Dota. It beat Dota. Dota's record was a little under 1.3 million. Now we're gonna see if this is where it tops out or if it has momentum because the next thing we're looking at is Counter-Strike's record is a little over 1.8 million. It is not necessarily beyond the veil of reason that this could hit that if it gets a little bit more momentum. Now, again, it's hard to say. Game hasn't been out for very long. It's, depending on your perspective, it is either a very awkward time in North America for this or the perfect time in North America for this. But in China, this did come out in the morning. So people who've been waiting for this uh, started playing it right away. Have been playing it probably all day if I had to guess. Very glad I didn't have class today because I have a feeling that many of my students wouldn't have shown up. It is hard to describe for you how big a deal this game really is in China. If I go on, just if I open up my internet browser without the VPN on and just kind of absorb the, the information that's being thrown at me from this country, I see that image, the image you've seen over and over again of Sun Wukong's face. It's the one on the uh, Game Science website. That has been all over the place. This is a huge, 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 huge deal. You do not even know. This is the kind of thing I used to talk to um, people about years ago when I worked in uh, private companies. I had uh, someone I knew, kind of a client slash student who was a big fan of some of the then-recent big-deal AAA games that were coming out of the West, stuff like uh, RDR2 would have been the biggest release at the time. And he was talking about how it's a shame that China doesn't produce games like that. Well, it has. This is something that many people in this country have been waiting a long time for, is to see a Chinese developer produce the kind of high production value AAA production value, even though it's not a AAA company, technically, uh, it's essentially a AAA game that they have made. They've been waiting for this for a long, long time. And I've mentioned, in fact, uh, I believe I first mentioned Black Myth in an article I wrote back in 2021 called Legends of the Middle Kingdom. There's also a video I did based on that. But I mentioned that one of the reasons people were looking forward to this was because this was a Chinese culture-themed game with potential international appeal. And that is not something you see a lot. That is the kind of thing that people over here have been anticipating for a good long while, is to see a Chinese game that is 
distinctly a Chinese game that succeeds overseas. And here we have a high production value action RPG, something we know works well in the West, getting released. But the question is, where is the attention coming from? Where are those 1.4, which presumably translate into 1.4 million sales minimum? Keep it in mind, it is priced like a AAA game, so I know a lot of people are waiting for a sale. This will continue to do well in the sales charts through the end of the year, probably well into next year as well. Where are the people who are interested in this game, where are they coming from? I'm looking at the Steam page right now. It is giving me about 14,000 reviews, which is pretty damn good after six hours. That is, Those are, again, AAA numbers, and not even every AAA gets reviews that quickly. Fewer than 10% of those reviews are in English. Now, this is something I look for whenever I look at a Chinese-developed game to see if it is breaking out. You look how many of the reviews are in English versus how many are in Chinese. And for a lot of the more niche games, uh, the number of English language reviews, the proportion is very low. It might only be 2 or 3%. For games with a little bit more crossover appeal, you'll see it go to maybe 5 to 10%. So right now, the range is actually pretty typical for a game where its sales are mostly concentrated in China. I can't speak to that definitively. And in fact, I really can't say much. We only have very preliminary data here. Uh, we will definitely know more over the coming days, weeks, months. I'll probably come back and end up doing a follow-up about this uh, once I have a more informed, more educated opinion. But right now, we are looking at the biggest game on Steam at the moment, which is one of the biggest games ever on Steam, just in terms of its player count, which is probably going to blow through the charts and, you know, could make it onto like the top 20, maybe even the top 10 selling games for the year. And it is doing that at the moment, at least, primarily on the strength of its incredibly loyal Chinese audience. This is a big deal game that Western critics and commentators and reviewers are going to talk about and have been talking about, but it is still a Chinese game with a Chinese audience in mind. Now, I say all this to bring up another point. I have, for several years now, really since I started going heavily into writing about video games, been a real advocate for discussing more in depth the role that mainland East Asia plays in the modern video game market, because no one wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to talk about Korea, and especially nobody wants to talk about China. And it doesn't seem to matter what happens to suggest that we should be talking about these things. I pitch articles about East Asian issues all the time, all the time. Video games over here, gaming culture over here, and in Korea. And I've never been taken seriously because nobody takes this part of the world seriously. So questions like, you know, how well is this game going to sell? How much money is it going to make? Is it going to retain these numbers over time? Those are all very empirical, very objective measures that we can track over time, and then we can analyze them and scrutinize them. But I also have a more subjective question, which is how goddamn long are these stuck-up, culturally chauvinistic assholes in the gaming press and on YouTube and all these other places how long are they going to ignore this? How long can they? When I first started at the beginning of this year trying to shop some of these articles around, a big part of my case was based on Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact is another thing that is a very big deal over here because it is a Chinese developed game that is having international crossover, especially big in Japan, by the way, which is amusing. Now, as memory serves, Genshin Impact actually set a record for hitting $5 billion in revenue the fastest. I want to say it only took them 29 months. 29 months to make $5 billion. And the people who run, especially the, the big gaming websites, know that Genshin Impact is a big deal, because if you look behind the scenes at their search results, they get a lot of searches looking for information on Genshin Impact. I thought, okay, here's a massive game, a colossal hit, international hit, out of China, surely, 
surely they're going to take this seriously now. And they didn't. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a shit about Genshin Impact because the people who write these things don't play games like Genshin Impact. But they do play games like Black Myth. I have been using the term prestige game throughout this because that is what this is. People in the gaming press like these really flashy, really showy AAA games that just, you know, show up, that push everything, you know, visually to its limits, that have like the quote unquote serious stories. They like things like that. And this is the kind of game these people play. And this is the kind of game that over the following you know, days and weeks, you're going to hear so fucking much about Black Myth. So my question is this. Is this going to be the game that finally convinces these assholes to take this part of the world seriously? I mean, I know they're not going to come back and talk to me because they never do. And what might happen is they start writing articles about the burgeoning Chinese video game market as though I hadn't already been doing it for several years and making that offer. That's just for me, though. That's my personal complaint. That's my beef. My question is, will this be the crossover game that finally gets these people off their asses and changes their minds? Will this be the game that finally convinces people that, yes, cool things can come from China?